We are now entering the Radfordale uh, Frankenstein Pinotage 2020 Wine Origin Stellenbosch. And I wonder if the name has been appropriately chosen because when I think of Frankenstein, I think of a monster, I think of something different, big, huge. Well, actually, we have something very delicate in, in that glass and then I can only assume that Frankenstein was a way to show the difference compared to the different other ways to make Pinotage. And it's a teamwork. Uh, Radfordell's Winery have a head winemaker with Jacques de Clerc, but uh, Alex Dell is always around giving his opinion and Edouard Labbé is always here to play the devil's advocate and question any uh, decision. Uh, so eventually what is supposed to be something different is actually the fruit of a well thought decision between great wine people. What is the result in your glass, Cathy? Yes, so the original Frankenstein, just for those of you who don't know, was written by a woman and she's often credited with writing one of the very first science fiction books because if you think about it Frankenstein was actually a science fiction book somebody created another living human being by sewing together body parts that were supposed to be an ugly creature and I that's voodoo like mm, well white voodoo um, so um, when Edward first made this I remember him in the cellar making this and just laughing himself silly so maybe he was like the doctor who created Frankenstein you know burn baby burn as you turn the, <laughs> the lightning bolt on cackling or whatever and he thought it was so much fun to make pinotage as a Frenchman coming to make pinotage in South Africa really great fun for him so I think that's where the name came from and the approach came from but the wine has changed a little over the years and this for me you know if Frankenstein is supposed to be ugly this is not ugly um, it's a real pale translucent color made probably in an homage to its Pinot Noir parent um, there's some smokiness on the nose and then a real red element to the expected mulberry, blueberry, blackberry fruits that you usually get on Pinotage. It's incredibly dry, wonderfully savoury on the palate and has this really clean, fresh finish. So it's 100% Pinotage, but you've almost got to wear your Pinot Noir hat when you're drinking it. To appreciate it because of that asset structure and because of the tannin structure. I agree it's got the color what Pinotage could get, uh, what Pinot Noir could get, it's got the texture that Pinot Noir, it's got the freshness that Pinot Noir could get. Maybe it's moved toward more black fruit is where the difference is but yeah clearly it's a very silky wine on the texture and uh, I find, uh, but this light mulberry, a touch of almost cassis and very savory, yes. um, and like you say, I almost get this uh, cooked beetroot and a touch of kimchi. You know this fermented cabbage, yes. the way the, the way they do in in Korea. That brings freshness because uh, if I look at the analysis, acidity is not huge. We had five grams, it's, but the one tastes elegantly fresh and uh, it's it's very uh, in French we have the word gouléon which means you can actually drink a lot of it it's refreshing gouléon 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 yeah and and that's how I could describe that wine uh, it's drinkability let me create my neologisms I can afford them uh, this drinkability is uh, a key marker of that wine. The acidity is there, but it's more going into, I mean, there's a bit of oak, but it's not oak sector. There's not the usual bitterness you can find on Pinotage, or otherwise this is so extremely well managed that it's passing for pure freshness. I think it's passing for pure freshness. And I must just say that in terms of structure, structure on the palette, I'd be really arguing for Pinot Noir. 
if yeah. I hadn't noticed this wine first. The structure is is really for me all very pin and wine like, but in in terms of um, and that freshness as well, it's coming from the alcohol, because the alcohol is low. It's twelve. That's a very good point. It's twelve percent alcohol, so you're not getting too much viscosity, and you're also not getting that sweetness that sweetness alcohol, alcohol does add yes. to the wine. So that is also what's contributing to this lovely dry dry texture and dry finish. Edward often uses a wine called sucrosité. Yes. Is that a French wine word? Is he pulling my leg? No, no. Sucrosité is is the the perception of sweetness. That's what you're getting here. You get a slight perception of sweetness, yet everything around it is constructed to deliver a dry wine. So, so eventually, it's still an unusual monster. It is, but it's, it's just pretty. a beautiful, elegant Pinot Noir-like uh, monster, but truly Pinotage. It's beautiful. In its black fruit and it's in refreshing texture. And yes, this slight pinotage bitterness could almost pass on for full bunch Pinot Noir fermentation when the scents are very ripe. It's a very, very interesting wine and that's going to be a difficult one to identify and to make sure you find the right cultivar. But, you know, it's a tray in the family. Remember that pinotage is a son or the daughter of Pinot Noir. Enjoy. Salute.